right? Yeah, okay. yeah. The founder of uh, the Citizens Foundation. Correct. So, could you please give us a bit of insight about the Citizens Foundations? Okay. Um, uh, the foundation uh, uh, initially started work about 16 years, 16 years ago. Uh, we had a we have five friends, and besides me, there are five others who are the founding members of this organization who felt that Pakistan has, well, any underdeveloped country has a problem of this nature, where the children are aimlessly roaming around on the streets uh, without any direction. So we said we must do something to put them into school. And uh, this story starts in 1995. And uh, we said uh, we put some targets on ourselves that it will be a co-education system and uh, it will be spread over the whole country, which is Pakistan, and it will be in the villages and the slums of Pakistan, and it will be creating uh, jobs for five, ten thousand people at least. And this was the intention then, but frankly speaking, we didn't know exactly what we are going into. Now, looking back in the hindsight, we started off with five schools. And uh, the first five schools were financed by the founding directors themselves. Subsequently, when these five schools came into operation, we started showing this, showcasing them to the prospective donors. And I cannot tell you what sort of a response we have had from the good people, well-meaning well people within the country and overseas. We only had... We had uh, attracting Pakistanis at the moment. And almost 98% of the money is coming from Pakistanis who are living in Pakistan and Pakistanis living abroad. Okay, so when you speak about young children uh, wandering around the streets and you want to grab them into the educational system, what, what, what's the recipe or the successful recipe, because this is obviously a successful enterprise, what's this recipe to get students engaged into education and especially children who don't really know what's the importance of you education? You see, uh, let me explain to you. It is not so much uh, the fault of the children because they haven't had any opportunities, because they don't have any schools close to their homes. So the, the, the children, uh, you know, it is the duty of a government, of a state, to provide this uh, facility for the children. Now, because there are no facilities, these children are. So when we stepped in, we just managed to plant a school right in the community so that it becomes a neighborhood activity. Rather than putting a big school somewhere far from the village or the slum, it would be futile. It would be So we planted that school right in the community. So now what has happened is we have made it flexible for the children. You know, some children have to look after their siblings. The girls have to look after the siblings, the smaller siblings, and the boys sometimes work. So what we have done is that we've got a morning shift and an afternoon shift. So uh, children who want to do something in the morning come in the afternoon and the other way, vice versa. So we have, we have taken away the choice from them. We've made it so easy and so less complex. And now, Every school we have built has got a long waiting list of because our school is only admitting about 180 children because we've got six classrooms and we admit 30 children per classroom. So there's always a thirst or a hunger for education. So they're in the waiting. So when we see that there's a very big waiting list, then we put another school there in that same area. So it's become a very fun, fun uh, sort of thing for the children. It's not when, at least my children went to school, they always were complaining, they didn't want to get up early in the morning. But here, this is a totally different story. These children are so overjoyed at being given an opportunity. So it's like changing lives for them. You know? yeah. so, so basically, the, the winning recipe would be to, to, to put educational as an, as an option, as an available option into them and, and make it flexible so that they, they have a choice when, when to do it. Absolutely. So, if you can put this recipe in two sentences, how would you put them? The winning recipe for grabbing children into the educational system. Just to summarize what what you said. Like like I said, that it is it, 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 learning has to be fun for the children. Any it's like they're no different from you or any other child, you know. That it has to be a a a element of activity uh, involved with uh, fun. And you see. In two sentences, like you said, it, it has to be uh, purposeful because 
these people don't have a second chance in their lives. They have been neglected for too long. Now there's an opportunity, so they clamor to get into the schools. Because once they are through with the schools, now we have started a program where they're going into colleges. Almost 72% of our children in colleges from, you know, from the high school. So it's an incredible uh, uh, achievement. Today we have got 730 schools, having more than 102,000 children in those schools. And it's a gender balance is like 50% girls and 50% boys. So this is something which is a success story in itself, can be replicated anywhere in the third world or a developing nation, Yeah, and is uh, scalable. Yeah, that's great. Okay, uh, going back to the focus of uh, the WISE Summit, everyone has been talking about that education has to be student-centralized. What, what, what's your, what do you think about being the, having the education as student-centralized? Uh, what kind of ideas do you think that young learners can come up with? Well, I personally feel that we, we are the has-beens of this world, you know. The learners, the young learners. You know, last time I gave my views that there should be more participation yeah. from the young learners side. They should be given a platform to hold more discussions. They should be given a platform to give their ideas, their fresh ideas, you know, because they are the, the future of tomorrow. So I feel that there should be more involvement on all levels for the students. You know, of course, they need coaching and guidance and counseling, but that will come in the process, you know. If, but if the children, if the young, the youth is given that responsibility, I'm sure they will come up with, with good responses and good uh, uh, suggestions uh, to the to the uh, and wise is no no different. I would say that wise has taken this step. I was hearing Dr. Abdul Al Thani speaking that this year there are more young learners. You know, I think there are 30 uh, who are yeah. actively participating, and there are workshops and there are some uh, uh, debate debates taking place by the uh, wise young learner. So that should be encouraged. That should be enlarged, expanded, enhanced. Okay, I, I have to thank you for this wonderful interview and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I always enjoy uh, talking to young people and uh, narrating my experiences. And uh, I'm proud of uh, what is happening in Pakistan. And I wish all of you the very best. It's very thank inspiration. You. Thank, thank you. Very, you. Thank you very much.